Hello everyone, it's your pal the Nightwalker, and uh, guess what, I'm back with another movie review. It's been a little while since I've done one of these, and uh, yeah, I think it's about time I try to get my head back in the game and try to see if I could do something. So the movie we're going to talk about tonight is, um, I just finished watching this a little while ago, so I'm going to try to talk about it while it's still fresh in my mind. And, uh, you know, I'm going to tell you right off the bat, there's going to be some spoilers. But <clears throat> the movie I want to talk about, well, you already know by the title. We're going to be talking about Jean Roland's 1982 movie, The Living Dead Girl. <clears throat> hey, wait a minute. Whoa, now that I think about it, could this be the, the movie that inspired the Rob Zombie song? Do you think that's even possible? Oh, man. That may be, may be one of those mysteries we'll never know. No, I'm pretty sure it is. Anyway, um, now this is actually a pretty a pretty good film by Jean Roland. Um, uh, obviously, you know, it's a French film, so... But, you know, don't let that deter you away from it because I've known some people, you know, when they find out that, that a movie is foreign, they tend to kind of shy away from those movies, uh, mainly because they tend to find, you know, foreign films harder to follow. But this film here, it's got a pretty basic storyline and it's, you know, it's not surreal. It's not one of those kind of films, you know, it's got a pretty simple plot and it's pretty easy to follow. The story is about this lady here, Catherine, who is a... What was the actress's name? Uh, Francois Blanchard plays Catherine. Well, at the beginning of the movie, we find out that, you know, she's, you know, she's dead. She's, you know, in a coffin inside of basically kind of like a crypt, a tomb sort of a situation. And um, so these two guys pull up in a van and it turns out that they've been taking barrels of toxic waste and they've been storing them in this kind of like this crypt mausoleum uh, place anyway. Well, you know, they decide while they're there, let's go ahead and we'll look at, you know, some of the coffins, see if, you know, like the dead people have any jewelry or anything that they want to take. And so, <clears throat> and of course, you know, it's kind of typical horror movie, the way it's set up. And, you know, like the, the you know, you got two guys, one guy's, you know, like, yeah, go ahead and steal the, you know, steal the jewelry and stuff like that. And the other guy's like, you know, uh, gee, I don't know. Are you sure? Should we really be doing this? Oh, go on, go on. What's the worst that could happen? So, you know, it's, it's pretty, you know, it's pretty standard. So he goes and he opens up the coffin that has, uh, Catherine inside of it. And, you know, Catherine, you know, she reaches up and she gouges out the guy's eyeballs and stuff. And, uh, you know, got some, I'm going to be honest with you, like some of the special effects in here, some of it's pretty good. Some of it, not so much, uh, they got some really good gore effects in here. And to be truthfully honest with you, real quick, this is probably, I haven't seen every single one of Jean Roland's films, but I think to date, this is probably the goriest one of his movies I've seen. Usually his movies are more kind of erotic, vampire, gothic type of films. So usually, you know, they have some blood in them, but they're not particularly like overly graphic or gruesome or anything like that. You see a little bit of blood, but usually they're, his movies are like more erotic in tone. They're more, um, you know, gothic in tone and things like that. So, and while this movie is, you know, gothic in tone and everything, but uh, yeah, this is probably, uh, you know, I don't want to speak too soon, but I think this is probably his most graphic movie that he's made. Uh, we'll see though. But so anyway, so Catherine, she comes back from the dead and uh, she kills the two, you know, fiends and she starts wandering around the countryside. So now you have two other characters, I believe, uh, Susan, I think that's the girl's name and Greg, they're out and they're having this argument because, you know, well, they stop at a restaurant, they want to eat. They tell them, you know, the restaurant's not open right now. They got to come back in like an hour because they felt a tremor. And it was the tremor that basically, uh, made the, the, uh, toxic waste get into Catherine's coffin. It's what brought her back from the dead. So they're out in the field and stuff and, and they're having an argument and uh, she's telling him about how, you know, she wanted to be an actress. But, you know, he's talking about, I love you. I love you so much. He's like, if you love me, why are you trying to change me so damn much and all this stuff? And um, so anyway, so she goes off and she's got a camera and she sees Catherine wandering through a field. And I have to be honest with you, it's, you know, I mean, like a lot of Roland's movies, this movie is beautifully photographed. But there is something kind of unsettling when you see the scene of just Catherine just walking, you know, she's wearing her white, basically the gown she was buried in, just seeing her walking along and, you know, just kind of walking in the field and just, I don't know. There's something kind of unsettling about it. I think there is. 
But uh, so anyway, so Catherine makes it back to her, basically kind of like her manor where she was a governess. And she runs into her friend, uh, uh, Helene, played by, was it uh, Marina Piero? Sorry. And, you know, we've, you know, Helene finds out that Catherine is, there's something wrong with her and that she's got to, you know, drink blood and things like that. And, but, you know, out of, uh, excuse me, sorry. Uh, uh, sorry. But out of love and friendship, uh, Helene decides that she's going to go ahead and she's going to take care of Catherine because that's what friends do. They take care of each other. And at first, you know, she's giving her, you know, uh, blood to drink, you know, animals, things like that. But then she decides that, you know, she's going to go ahead and she's going to start uh, bringing her people. So, you know, Helene goes out and she starts, uh, you know, going through the countryside. And she's, you know, like at one point she picks up a victim and, you know, she's pretending that her car broke down. And the woman's like, you know, the woman's very nice and accommodating and. Oh, well, you know, I'll go ahead and drive you to a gas station and stuff. She said, well, my car runs on diesel. And, uh, you know, the thing is, is I have it delivered to my house. So if you go to my house, you know, we can go to the garage and we'll get the, uh, you know, we'll get the diesel. You just bring me back to my car. I'll fill it up and, you know, everything will be gone. So the woman decides, okay, that's fine. So they get to the manor and she's, you know, they get out and she's like, wow, this place is amazing, you know. And Helene's like, you want to, you know, go in there and take a look? And it's like, yeah, sure. So they go in there and they start, you know, looking around. And uh, the lady, she sits down and Helene's telling her, you know, I'll go ahead and I'll get the gas can. I'll be right back and stuff. So it's like, you know, it's starting to take a while and she's getting worried, you know, and all this. And she's starting to get suspicious, like something ain't right here. She gets up and she starts looking around. She's smoking. She's like checking all the doors, things like that, trying to find a way out. All the doors are locked, and finally she comes across Helene, who, um, you know, is like, what's the matter with you? You okay? She's like, you know, I thought the, you know, you know, why are the doors all locked? And she says, well, I always lock the doors after me whenever I go somewhere. So, you know, like, are we going to go now? I'd like to get out of here and stuff. You know, I'm expected in Paris. And so Helene's like, okay, yeah, we'll go ahead and we'll go to the, you know, we'll go to the garage and stuff. But what ends up happening, though, she opens the door, turns out leads to basically a cellar, and she pushes the woman into the cellar. And um, so while the woman is like, what are you doing? Why are you doing this to me? And she's looking around, and, you know, you have um, Catherine, you know, stalking and lurking up, and finally she jumps up and attacks her and uh, bites her neck and, you know, starts ripping out her guts and everything else, and she's screaming and stuff. And the screams are really bothering Helene, and she's running away trying to cover her ears so she wouldn't have to listen to it and stuff. But, uh, so anyway, you know, but she decides, you know, it's what she's got to do. So anyway, so, you know, now also, too, Susan and Greg, they start to become more, you know, kind of curious about what's going on here, what's going on at that castle, things like that. And Helene continues to bring victims for, uh, for Catherine to, you know, kill them and drink their blood and things like that so she can survive. And Catherine seems like she's always in constant pain because, you know, she always needs blood and everything else. So, and then at one point, you know, they go to this, uh, there's kind of like a village, it's kind of like a dance, a party kind of a thing and stuff. And Susan and, and uh, uh, Greg, well, they notice that, well, at one point, Susan does go to the, the manor to see Catherine and basically... <clears throat> Basically, she gets chased away by Helene, but she's like, wow, everything is kind of, yeah, this is all kind of really suspicious going on here and stuff. And so, you know, she, they're at this uh, dance festival and she's, you know, uh, Susan sees Helene take this village girl and kind of like lead off with her and stuff. It's like, what's going on here? Okay, this is kind of weird. And then, you know, we find out that, you know, the that Helene is driving the girl back to the manor so she can kill her so that Catherine can drink her blood. And, uh, she's bringing her in there and she starts, you know, like she's got like a, a dagger. She starts cutting her bleeding, telling <clears throat> Catherine that she needs to feed. And Catherine is, you know, Catherine's at the point she just wants to die now. I mean, die for good this time. <clears throat> so anyway, so she's just going on and on about it. And, you know, no, let me die. Just go away. <clears throat> go away. Let me die and everything else. Well, so now uh, Greg and Susan, they get to the castle. Greg, he starts looking in uh, Helene's car. Susan, meanwhile, she, you know, 
doing the most logical thing in the entire world you could possibly do. She hears screams coming from inside the manor, so she just hauls ass in there to see what's going on. And uh, so she runs, you know, she hears the screams coming from the basement. And in the basement, Helene, she grabs a tor a fiery torch and everything. And then uh, Susan shows up and Helene's like, you know, you need to get out of here. You're not, you know, you're not welcome here. Get the hell out of here. If you know what's good for you, you leave, all this other kind of stuff. And Susan is all like, you know, what's going on? What are you doing? And all this other kind of stuff. And basically, Helene just takes the, the torch and just lights Susan's face on fire. And so she goes running out and everything. And, you know, Greg sees her, you know, she's completely on fire and everything else. And uh, so, so she goes, she jumps, you know, off the bridge into the wall, into the moat. Pretty much, because yeah, it's one of those kind of places got like a moat around it. So anyway, so Greg goes and he sees her jump into the water, and just as he turns around, Helene comes up and basically splits his head in two with an axe. So uh, yeah, nice and gruesome there, huh? But anyway, so now we're into the final stages of the film. Catherine decides she doesn't want to kill anybody anymore. Uh, she goes up to the victim, the girl, the the village girl, and rather than kill her, she let, sets her free, and then you know you know, helps her escape. And then she goes and tries to drown herself. Helene sees all this going on and, you know, pulls Catherine out of the moat and brings her back to the shore. And, uh, Catherine decides, you know, you know, I'm going to do this, you know, and all this. And so she turns around, she bites Helene and she's like, you know, like tearing apart her arm and biting her arm and biting her neck and blood and everything else. So, and she's crying and wailing and that's pretty much about where the movie ends. So, um, Overall, it's an entertaining movie. Uh, like I said, it's pretty much um, Roland's more graphic films. It's <clears throat> some of the special effects work really well. Some of them not so much. Some of them you can kind of tell, like yeah, you know, that they don't work well. Maybe they will look better if you saw them on VHS, but here they just. But uh, yeah, you know the movie's pretty good. It's you know it is a departure from Roland's other films. Usually, like I said, his movies are more kind of sexy erotic more gothic in tone things like that not particularly like you know graphic or anything like that not like this movie is but still you know it's a departure from his other films but it it's kind of weird it's like it's different but it feels the same as his other movies if that makes sense but um you got good performances you know and uh i do believe that uh you know uh what's her names again uh marina piero and francois blanchard i think they both do a great job so, yeah, I highly recommend this. You know, if you're into, you know, you love a good. The only thing is, though, is like, you know, if you're going into this thinking it's going to be like a zombie movie, it's really not. There's not a lot of like gut munching or any of that stuff. It's more like just vampirism. So, and that's kind of really the thing that Roland was known for. He was known for more his vampire story. So, if you're going into this thinking it's going to be like a, a zombie movie, no, it's much more of a vampire film. So, Anyway, so take that for what it is, and uh, that's pretty much going to do it. So, yeah, it's been a while since the last time I reviewed a movie, so hopefully everybody enjoyed it. Sorry, I know I kind of screwed up a few times, but anyway, that's going to pretty much be the end of it. So if anybody took the time to watch all this, I thank you for doing it. I appreciate you for doing it. I also hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did, please like and subscribe, and uh, I want to try to do more movie reviews more often. And uh, until then, this is your pal, The Nightwalker, saying take care. Watch out where you go at night, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.